Hello again to all my friends, teachers, parents, pets, whoever you are. Cats, dogs. Cats, dogs. Fish, rabbits. Birds, rabbits. Rabbits stink. It's Earth Day coming up. It is Earth Day, isn't it? Not yet, but it is coming Almost. up. Almost. Friday. Is there a connection to that for this video? Well, we're talking about birds and Almost. And Earth Day. Anyways, we are wasting too much time doing that stuff. Yeah, so, my, my students have already complained our videos are too long. Well, so. my students complain about anything, so it's okay. Anyways, Mr. Benjamin here. And who am I with? I'll wait till you're done writing. Thank there you. There we go. Miss Podlipski. Mrs. P. And somewhere in the background is... Mrs. Stereo! <laughs> Mrs. Stereo's here. <laughs> this is our fourth video of Systems and Actions, and we're looking at Simple Machines. Our learning goals for this video, we are going to identify and describe the six types of simple machines. I will scribe as Mrs. Podlipsky reads them out for me. Okay, so our six types of simple machines include levers. Mm -hmm. Or levers, depending or how you levers, say it. Or levers, depending on how you want to say it. Pulleys. Or pull, no. Joking. No, just pulleys. Uh, screws. Inclined planes. That one's going to be hard to write. Inclined planes. There we go. Wedges. Wedgies. No, not a wedgie. A wedge. <laughs> and wheel and axle. I'm sorry if you can't see this one, but I've run out of space. That's okay. Okay, and wheel and axle. And Perfect. we will talk about all of these levers. We're going to go in-depth into another video, but the rest of them, we will give you a brief description of what they are. Starting off with levers or levers... Doesn't matter how you want to say it. Some people are going to say tomato, it way. tomato, tomato, tomato. But nobody says tomato. Exactly, so. tomato is the right way to say it. It's like potato, potato. Who says potato? Anyways, a lever is a rigid bar that is supported by one point. That one point is usually called the fulcrum or the pivot point. So right here, this is our fulcrum or pivot point. Slash pivots. So they might have experienced um, a lever uh, at the playground. In the form of a? Teeter-totter. Teeter-totter. Right. So if you have somebody sitting over here and you have somebody else sitting over here. Um, That's a really all, weird I looking know. face. I'm sorry. No, I meant like this whole thing. Yay. I got a riddle for you, but we've already given the answer. We yeah. should have started that off with the riddle. <laughs> Too late. It's a good one. I'll, maybe I'll ask my class tomorrow and they won't know it. <laughs> so basically, we have our fulcrum. Down here. Now, the reason for having this is we almost always have a load and an effort. The load is something we either want to move or get out of the way or there's different reasons for it. That's why there's different classes of levers. But the effort, if our effort goes down, the fulcrum is going to act as a pivot point and it's going to adjust the force, causing the load to go up. So if this is a rock we have to get out of the way, uh -huh, for example, like this, it is eventually going to move out of the way. So our good friend over here, Mr. Longboots, He's taking his piece of wood, his stick, whatever you want to call it here. He's putting it over this fulcrum point. This point right here is the fulcrum. I'm just going to write F. Well, I know I wrote the whole thing. Fulcrum. Slash pivot. And he is using it. He's using his downward force to move this large rock. It's going to move out of the way now. It's going to roll away. Bye-bye, rock. That brings us to our second class of uh, simple machines, and that's the pulleys. So pulleys, uh, the way that they are built is basically they have a covered wheel. Grooved wheel. Sorry, grooved wheel. My writing isn't right. that bad. <laughs> that's a G. That's clearly a G. Let me rewrite here. Fine, you rewrite. Okay. Grooved wheel. G-R-O-O-V-E-D. Grooved wheel um, with a rope and a cable. And so uh, if you think of... Oh, what is that? C7 roofed? Oh, oh I'm goodness. sorry. Okay, grooved wheel. The way sometimes I think of it is if you have, um, say you are trying to lift a bucket or something like that um, out of a well or oh, what have you. Water. Um, quite often you'll have it in a pulley system. And so you've got this grooved wheel. And the reason it's grooved is to keep that rope or cable on a track so it's not going to slip off. And then as you are pulling on the rope, it's going to pull up on that bucket. So it can change the direction of the force. So you pull down. It's going to change colors here. You pull down here. And then the bucket goes up, so it's changing directions. It can also increase the output force, and so it can give you a little bit more force when you're trying to pull something. So um, some examples, uh, one that you will uh, see from time to time is somebody raising or lowering a flag. And so as you pull down again on that cable, these young people here, 
are highly energetic. People. Highly energetic, raising their flag. Pull down on the cable, and that flag is going to raise up into the air. So we see that change in direction. Um, this gentleman over here. More than likely a farmer. Yeah, it looks like a farmer. He's got a farmer's hat on and the overalls. Um, as he is pulling down, um, he's able to lift this stack, uh, of, hay. stack of hay into the air, um, and it looks like it's quite heavy. So as he pulls down on uh, the rope, uh, the pulley system allows him to have an increased uh, force, so increased effort for, or increased output force as he's pulling down on it. Okay. So those are some examples of pulleys. So wheel and axle. We, uh, the wheel and axles are third uh, type of simple machine. So an axle or shaft attached to a large disc called a wheel, and we're going to look at an example of this, but some types are screwdrivers, even a doorknob or pedals on a bike would be examples of this. So here's a screwdriver that I have uh, outlined here for you, and Mr. Benjamin doesn't like it because I think it's, it's I think it's centered. beautiful, but I don't know what's going on right there. Yeah, whatever. It's not centered, but it's still a good example. Can so, I see it? Yes, you can no, you see, can't it. see it. Oh, it looks amazing. Oh, That's thank like you. Center. Thank you. That is perfect. Oh, my it's like a level three plus. Yeah, whatever. All right. It's so than mine. here's our uh, our screwdriver. So our input force, so where you're actually putting in any effort, is going to be on the handle part. So our input force is going to be. I'm just going to switch to a different color here. It's going to be purple. Purple's good. Um. So our uh, effort force or our input force is over here in the handle. Uh, and then our output force is the load. So we're trying, what we need to do is we actually have to get this end to turn. So the amount that you're able to put in here, it actually increases the load over on this side. So you've actually got um, an output force um, at the axle. So the wheel is your input or effort and your axle over on this end here is your load force or your output force. It's at the axle. And, and, the, and the same goes for if you are uh, cranking the wheels on your bike, right? So you want the pedals, bike, yeah. sorry, the, the pedals. The pedals are going to be um, your uh, input and your output is going to be on the tires. So mm -hmm. to get them to crank. And, and that always comes back to mechanical advantage as well. So this is going to increase your mechanical advantage. Incline planes. This is a sloping surface on which an object can move. For example, our little friend with the skateboard here. Hello. Look at him. He's he's wearing. Oh yeah, Mrs. Tara, your your kid's skateboard, right? Yes. Make sure that you've got your helmet Helmets, on. Helmets, elbow pads, safety first, knee pads. Probably got all that stuff. But anyways, so any incline plane that allows a surface or that has a surface that allows an object to move. And it doesn't so, have to have this curve here. It not necessarily. It can be straight as, well. as yeah. well. But I like the curve, so we're gonna make it a curve. Okay. So if I had a ball up here, this comes back to potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy up here. And as it goes down, we're looking at kinetic energy. Because it's moving. It'll gain mm -hmm. kinetic energy. Right. Okay. So this is something uh, we might get into in the next lesson. Uh, when you're looking at inclined planes, you can actually calculate your ideal mechanical advantage. And we do this using the height the height of your plane, and also the length, so how long it is. So just keep that in mind as we move uh, through this chapter uh, that we might be calculating the ideal mechanical advantage. And so for inclined planes, it's quite straightforward. It's just using height and length. Okay. Okay. Our next one is screws. So screws are actually a type of inclined plane, believe it or not. And the inclined plane is wrapped around the rod. So if you look at all the threads that are here, it's actually, actually a version of an inclined plane if you look at it. So you can see all these inclines right here. And so that's, uh, it's an inclined plane that's wrapped around the rod. I'm just going to erase all this. Here we go. So those inclined planes along the rod. So the thread on the screw actually allows you to push through solid wood with a minimal force. So if you think of trying to drill a screw into a piece of wood, you can use your screwdriver, which we just talked about. There you go. Again, it's not center. I'm sorry, Mr. Benjamin. 
I didn't say anything. <laughs> so you can use your screwdriver, um, which is a wheel and axle, and you can help to increase the, the uh, force going to be put onto that screw. And then again, you have another simple machine in the screw that's going to allow you to push through that wood um, and drive that screw in better than you would be able to without it. Like you wouldn't be able to push a screw into wood. Or You'd be able push to push down. a nail. Well, it, using a hammer. Yeah. But that's a different kind a different of simple of machine. machine. Funny, we haven't mentioned hammers right? here. Right? That'll be like, well, maybe they will use it as an example. Something close. Oh, yeah. We shouldn't have told them that. Now <laughs> they can't use it. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> Anyways, a wedge is another inclined plane, very it's similar our, to our... It's our last one. The last what? Last in, or sorry, our oh, last it is our last. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's our last inclined plane. So it travels through the object or material. Now, the reason for that is you are taking an object that's of large size... I always think of spears when I think of this, and I know it's like it's not necessarily the greatest thing, but the way a spear works, if you are hunting or if you are in a war or something, I don't know, you have a very large object that has a lot of mass to it. And as you thrust this object forward, all of that mass comes to a point. This one little point is going to have a great amount of force on it, which is why spears can be so devastating. They can do so much damage or they can kind of penetrate material. That's the same way that an axe works, for example. This axe is beautiful, by the way, with Spud Lucky. Oh, thank you. And if you've ever had to chop wood for a wood-burning stove or a fire when you go camping, I know a lot of my kids go camping. Camping's awesome, by the way. The way you do that is the force all comes down to this sharper edge. All of the weight of this hatchet or axe comes down on that one point. That allows the wedge to drive into the wood and split it in half. In general, a longer and narrower wedge has a greater mechanical advantage. Those that are kind of shorter and wider, not as much. You have to put a lot of force into them to get them to work. But longer and narrower, like my spear, have better mechanical advantage. Anything else? I think that's it. That's it? I'm just laughing because you're talking with your hands and they can't see you. I know. It's really... I, I do that a lot. <laughs> Very Italian-like. So, your task... Try this. Comment with an example of two of the six types of machines. So don't say inclined plane and screws. Give us an example. We gave you several examples. You can find some examples as well. So some real life examples. And so from two of the different categories. And remember, Mrs. Podlipsky's class, you are commenting within our Google Classroom environment. So when you go to Google Classroom, you can click on the video. It'll take you to YouTube. Go back to Google Classroom in order to comment on... Uh, on the, two, on the Google Classroom, yeah. Two different uh, examples from two different classes. My class, comment on the video, or... Yeah, just comment on the video. I'll be the easiest way. And I think that's it. Should we say thank you? Sure. Why not? Thank you. Okay, don't forget to comment so that we know that you watched the video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.